Welcome to the HVAC Know-It-All Podcast. Recorded from a basement somewhere in Toronto, Canada. Your host and HVAC tech, Gary McCready, will take you on a deep dive into the industry discussing all things HVAC. From storytelling to technical discussion. Enjoy the show. I thought we'd have a bit of a, a technical discussion on a few different motor styles. Now, I'm going to leave the, the link to the article that we're going to reference during this so the audience can go ha have a read. But we're going to use this article as reference that you guys collectively put together uh, to drop on the hvacknowitall.com website. So thank you very much, first and foremost, for that. So permanent split capacitor motors, they're very abundant out there. I see a ton of them. Uh, they're starting to slowly fade, I guess, as the ECM motor comes along. But if we have a, if we take the educational angle on an ECS, uh, a PCS motor, permanent split capacitor motor, uh, how, how does that type of motor work and function? Uh, so yeah, those are probably still the most popular motor out there. They've been around for 40 or 50 years. Um, and they're kind of a, a bit of a hybrid that works really good in HVAC. So um, a few of the pros is they are energy efficient. They're very simple to manufacture. Um, they're, they're very inexpensive. And then some of the cons is that they are um, made somewhat cheaply, so you can't repair them. Um, and uh, they don't have great speed regulation, but in HVAC, you don't really need that per se. So they kind of check off a bunch of boxes to what an HVAC motor needs to be. Mm -hmm. And Corey, in your experience working on um, the, the business side of things here, do you see, are you seeing a demand for PCS motors coming through the website at all? Like a high demand oh, or sure. how, how are you seeing that? For sure, you know, as, as a motor shop, we're typically the guys they call when something breaks down. Um, so a lot, of the, a lot of the motors we see are still a, a lot of the older equipment. Um, a lot of the, the, new, the new new product is, is going through HVAC companies like yourself. But a lot of the old stuff, we still get a lot of homeowners calling or guys that are a general electrician, not necessarily an HVAC guy, calling us to try and replace a motor because they're the only guy in that little small local town. Mm -hmm. So in, in my experience, like um, I, I see a lot of condenser fan motors that, per, that are permanent split capacitor. Blower motors, not so much. Most of them are, are, are three phase uh, that I see anyway in, in the land of commercial that I'm in. Uh, but going back to the technical side of that, um, just, just reading in this article that both windings are engaged at all times. There's no way to, to take that start winding out of the, the motor once it gets up to speed, right, Chris? No, on a permanent capacitor, uh, there is a main winding and an auxiliary winding, and then a run capacitor. So the auxiliary winding and the run capacitor act as your start circuit to um, let the motor know what direction to run and to give it that starting torque, but they do stay in the circuit all the time. Okay, and as far as calling a start winding an auxiliary winding, is there a story to that or is it just kind of, that's just sort of a different term to, to use for the start winding? Just a different term. Um, you'll hear it used either way. So that, that winding itself allows the motor to dissipate heat like towards the capacitor, right? Um, I wouldn't say that. I think it, it more shifts the phase, the vector phase from the main winding with the capacitor in the circuit. And that's what's, what gives it a, it's a starting torque and it's the high efficiency. Okay. I, the reason I, the reason I ask that is because I've talked to a few guys online that have wired a capacitor, um, two capacitors in parallel instead of one, and they've actually got longer, um, capacitor runtime and, and motor runtime in, in their experience anyway, because they, they, they felt like that run winding or the, sorry, the start winding um, as it was dissipating heat to, to two capacitors, they felt that that was causing the longevity in the motor. That, that that's why I asked that question. Yeah. And, and that's true, but in a different sense, adding the second capacitor in would increase the power factor closer to um, unity and that would mm -hmm. drop your current and make your motor run cool. Um, I think it's a, a balance when the motors are, when the manufacturers are manufacturing these motors um, to meet the minimum levels, they might put a, a five microfarad run capacitor in this motor. That motor runs fine, draws the normal amperage, draws an acceptable level of heat. But is that 
the highest run capacitor they could put in that motor? Probably not, but for cost of the capacitor and of the motor, that's the width of you. It's sticking a 10 or a 15 might actually be better for the motor and help it run cooler. I see. And see, Corey, I told you I wasn't that smart. I just hear, I'm just here to ask questions. That's why, <laughs> that's why I have, that's why I have experts on here. So, I mean, we have kind of a cool promo code here that we're working with you guys on. And, and that promo code is HVAC know it all. And it's going to save the audience 8% on their motor. So I, I, first of all, I want to thank you guys for that because anytime the audience that's listening to this can get some value, especially in savings. Um, I think that's a, a huge benefit. So thank you guys for that. Mm -hmm.